Hey everybody, how's it going today? All right, as I promised, I'm gonna tear down my 3080. Hopefully it'll run later. Okay, it will. What I'm gonna do is take off all the screws, pull it apart, check the thermal paste, check the thermal pads. I picked up some really good thermal paste. I do like the um, the Arctic. This one, no, I'm sorry, this one's the Nautica. I've got the Arctic over there. This one's the Nautica NTH2, non-conductive. Very good stuff. So what I'm going to do now is drop the camera down onto the desk so you can get a better look. And you know, I'm looking at this. <laughs> Oh man, I forgot to take half the plastic off on this. It's been in there for six months. Uh, I still got all the plastics on it. Uh, I'll do that later. Anyways, we'll be back. We'll be back in a second and we'll get to work on this. So, as always, best tool in the world. Right here is a little small electric screwdriver. Always a regular Phillips head, of course. And we're never going to forget the... This one is, um, it's a generic of the, uh, oh, what was the name of that other one? Anyways, this one's called a Hodo. And um, there's another company that makes them, but now they're being made by quite a few different companies. There was one company in specific that made them for quite a while. Anyways, you really, you really need to get some, when, when you're working on these small screws, they're all kind of different. And, and some of them are Phillips heads, some of them are little star drivers, and of course, some of them are different sizes. And the thing you got to do is you're going to make sure you have good tools that are going to be able to bite right down and get all of these off. So, of course, again, I'm just going to run this right through. They're all pretty much the same size on this plate. It still feels like there's something there that I'm not seeing. Is it? Yes, there is. Right under the EVGA sticker. That's where they put it so they can get you on the warranty. But you know something? I don't care. This shit sticks all to your hands on stuff, rather. There we go. I got most of it there good chunk of it. At least I can see my screw now. Okay. Okie dokie. If you hear any strange noises, it's my buddy in the other room laughing like a goofball. So what do we have? Is this aluminum? Actually, it is. I thought it was carbon fiber because of the way it looked, but it is aluminum. And you would think that I would at least look it up and see. So it is a brushed aluminum and it's nice. I like it. I like it. Hey, Mikey. Okay. I can't expect much else. Now these pressure springs bingo wowzer 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 you guys see that Boing! hoping to pop your ears out holy schmoly I could have said something else. 
Holy molten, holy mackerel. I don't know why I keep saying that. My dad used to say that when I was a kid. Holy mackerel, will you look at the size of that fish? It was this big, but when he finished talking about it, it was big. And then the shroud doesn't have any screws in it that I can see yet. No sense in using the power driver. These things are so tiny. Okay, so here we are again. Strange, they must have changed the way they plugged these on. It comes with like a little hinge. There it is. It just pops right out. Okay. And you gotta pull it around your fans and there's your shroud. Brown wire goes to the outside. Now all of these fans come off. Well, that one's actually for RGB. These all go to the fans. They do come off and they're held on. And this is a good thing I like about all these newer video cards. You might notice that down in here, there's usually two or three, two screws on each fan. It seems to me that this is almost ready to come off. It is. Okay, so what I'm gonna have to do is do some very, very, very careful prying. As you can see. Okay, this is gonna take a few minutes, but basically I'm gonna pull these fans all off. There's three. I'm gonna pull this massive, massive radiator, well, air radiator, and you can see the copper plate down in there, fins, it's pretty clean. I'm gonna separate everything, and we're gonna take a look on the inside. Okay, so we're back, and this is not an easy thing at all. I already messed up one little piece of the, oh, it's very little actually. It's not even on the, um, it's not even on the VRAM, okay. So this is where you gotta be, there we go. Gotta be very careful. This has got to be pushed. Be careful when you're taking these out. Okay, I got two. And the third one's being a little stinker. clip off of that just come out there it is okay so it looks like they use more of a paste than a pad and yeah oh my goodness yes it needs it it is oh it's all dried out that's nasty all right, so it looks like I'm going to have to put some of this stuff down here and get some paper towels, cotton pads. That is nasty. I can't believe that. Wow. I'm going to do a little bit of dusting. The pads themselves are fine. This is all dried out, it's all powder. Look at it. All powder, look at that. 
I've never seen that before. I can't, this thing must have been running hot. Okay, we're gonna see what I was, <laughs> we'll see what we're getting for temperatures later. I am so glad that I took this apart right now. Okay. Quick note. There's not a lot to these things, but look at this. This is supposed to be soft. This is supposed to be like mushy. It's powder. It's powder. Look at it. It's powder. It's dust. It's just dust. That is horrible. The pads are nice. They always use good pads, but this paste, disgusting. We'll be back. Okay. One of the first things that I am going to do, I was looking at this, is this stuff is so dry, I am not even going to waste my time rubbing away with alcohol pads on a lot of this. It's going to have to go down on a paper towel. Put a paper towel under there. Wow, I can't believe that. The thicker stuff is a little bit moist. Nah, it's not even, it's just cracking right off. And this is what I'm gonna do, is clean this all off and get it so it doesn't fall into the heat sink before I use any alcohol. Don't mind my nose running, it's, I just had an allergy fit a few minutes ago. Probably from the dust off of this crap, maybe I should be wearing a mask. So first we'll start with this. Look at that. Alcohol's barely even. <laughs> My goodness. Gotta let it kind of sit on there for a minute. Wow, even on that, look at it, it's so dry. Okay, what I've started doing here is measuring and cutting out some of the thinnest thermal pads that I have. Obviously, I'm hoping. Now, I do have to test this and make sure that I have the proper amount of pressure going down on that GPU because that could be the reason they use the paste because it needs to be completely butt up against if this is too high and it doesn't allow me to tighten down enough to be able to put enough pressure on that GPU. Touched it with my finger. Don't want no oil on it. It won't spread out, have enough contact to keep it warm. And I definitely will find out when I fire it up. But by putting it on the pressure plate, you can see where they're gonna fall. These are where the VRAMs go, and this is where the CPU will make its contact. Once I put it on, tighten it down, I'll loosen it up, take a quick look at it. If it's got a good spread, a good even spread, and I can see that every one of these are touching, and these are touching good, then I know we're good. I'm gonna tell you the truth. I think anything's basically better than what they had here. It was almost nothing. You want to really put it that way. Normally, there's always thermal pads on these. Almost every one I've ever seen done. I mean, it may have been an ASUS, something a little bit different, but... Okay, so... The moment of truth. I may not even be able, have to tighten it up. If I can put it down and I can see a good contact on the thermal paste here, 
then I know I'll get enough pressure on the VRAMs. The VRAMs just need to be touching. They're not the ones that need to have the most pressure up against them for cooling contact as the GPU. That's what is the most important thing. What did I do with my GPU juice? Here it is. <clears throat> Got my GPU juice. Yeah, baby. This is good stuff. Nautica. Nautica. The best around. Oh, I did remember one thing. They, they forgot to even put one on. LR22. They never even put one on that sucker. I like this because it's a pretty thick compound and it's non conductive. Okay. Right on the money. Bing, bang, boom. What do we got? Moment of truth, folks. And this is with very little pressure. Oh yes, we got contact, baby. And I haven't even talked socked that sucker down yet. Once you put them four bolts in, pull everything tight. Let me see what it looks like in there. Oh yeah, nice contact. Okay, so we're back and wow did we get good contact. I mean, I, I put that on, I, I could barely pull it apart. And once I did, the GPU was completely covered and they were really nice solid dents and everything. So, dents meaning dents in the thermal pads. So obviously, this board should have had thermal pads on it. It shouldn't have had some sloppy, cheap paste put in there that that, that was I, I can't believe it I am really glad that I did this because I got a funny feeling by looking at the temperatures I really do have a funny feeling that this board this card would have had some issues soon it, it would it was it was coming so one of the biggest problems is is putting this back on they're pressured so you usually got to start one, which I already did, and then you got to really push down. Now they make these, they make a tool. So when you tighten this, you can get, what do they call that? Like a, uh, on a car, a torque, a torque driver. I don't really think a torque driver would be necessary, but I mean, I know they do have a certain torque that they put these down at from the factory. Okay, folks, we'll be back in a few minutes. Now that you've seen the main part finished, I've got a few more screws to put in. Looks pretty good. Main parts done. Put the back plate on. Okay, so here we are back. Oh, Jesus! All buttoned up. As you can see, the blue pads are down in there. Maybe even on the other side, it might be easier to see them. Yeah, you can see blue right there. Everything has good contact, good contact between the GPU and the, and the um, copper plate. So, throw it back in. See if we get a difference in temperatures. Hopefully it's lower. How low can you go? So we'll be back with a final result.
Okay, so here we have it. I think we're doing pretty darn good. I just ran it through every benchmark, 3D mark test that I had, and now it's running at idle. Before it was running up a little over 80 at idle, which is hot at idle. I don't even know how it ran during games. Now it's running 39, 37, and 40. I think that's pretty good. The memory's running about the same. That's DDR4-3600. Hot spots are low. Couldn't ask for much more. CPU's always running cool as always. That's got a nice water cooler on it. So there we have it. Going from that crusty stuff to what's on it. Almost cut the temperatures in half. And that's enough for me for today, folks. Everybody, don't forget to uh, give me a like. And if you're new to the channel, please remember to the subs subscribe. Subscribe. Have a good one.